So why go and build a fully enclosed simulator? It's a very good question. Well, let's get into some of the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. Well, good day, everyone. Thanks for joining and uh, hope you're well. Yes, for those that follow me, you know that I've got a Cessna 172 G1000 fully enclosed simulator. And I thought I'd take a few minutes today to perhaps, for those that are thinking about building something or contemplating building a simulator of their own, uh, some, share some of my thoughts to let you know what I think are some of the good points, the bad points, and some of those not so what I would call probably ugly points. Anyway. Let's start with some of the good. First and foremost, I think one of the good things in with building a simulator is that sense of achievement. There's nothing better, and you do this in your own lives generally, when you put yourself to a big project uh, and you have a vision and you want to get somewhere with it, then the satisfaction of actually seeing something created that sort of is almost living the vision that you wanted um, is so satisfying. Uh, and that is the thing that jumps out immediately to me in the building of the simulator that I've built. That sense of achievement, that feeling that, you know, after months and months of design and thinking and sketching and visualizing ideas and everything that you wanted, finally getting to that realization of seeing it all come to life, um, it's massive. Definitely the sense of achievement is uh, really, really good. You can't beat it. Immersion is big in simulation. And I think for anyone that's been in, whether it be in VR, whether it be in fully enclosed jet airliner 737s at a local store somewhere that, you know, that has these uh, simulation things, when you're physically inside something and you're touching the dials and buttons and everything else, the, the more immersion you can get, the more it brings to reality for you. Now, I'm not a pilot. I've always professed that I'm not a pilot. I have been up in planes many, many times, so I get the general idea of it. Um, I just wanted to create something that gave me as much immersion as I could, short of obviously not experiencing G-forces, um, turbulence and those sorts of things. And even some of that, I can't replicate G-forces, but turbulence, I can get into that in a, in a bit later, have got a little bit of that, I guess to a certain extent with the butt kicker. I'm digressing. The point I'm trying to make is immersion is another big point. Um, I'm not sitting at a desk with a monitor, albeit there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm sitting in a physical shell that is one-to-one -one size uh, of a Cessna 172. Immersion is brilliant. Uh, once you've got a fully fledged cockpit sitting in front of you and you're sitting inside a physical shell that has a roof, side walls, floor, centre console panel, you name it, it's all there. Another big thing is it's a hobby and it's a very good hobby uh, and it's one that I'm glad I got into. Um, there's such a big community in flight simulation globally uh, you've got online flight communities, we've got online air traffic control, an absolute plethora of YouTube channels all promoting different aspects of flight simulation. And every time you generally reach out to people, I'm pretty confident that most people will want to help you and steer you in the right direction, at least from their perspective and their opinions. It's a great hobby to get into. Um, and it's one that I thoroughly enjoy and I've been doing this now for a number of years, albeit both building and flying. As a hobby, it's a lot of fun. It's very educational. Uh, before I started building uh, this, I had absolutely no idea, and I mean zero idea, when it came to electronics. I didn't even know what a Arduino board was. <laughs> so there was such a big learning curve in relation to pulling 
more so on the electronic side of things as opposed to the shell and so on but there was a big learning curve there of how to um, you know configure things and wire things up and learn a bit about software and so on so from a learning experience perspective big curve there um, and I still learn uh, today you know if I'm tinkering around or whatever it, there's still a learning piece there so if you want to learn as well and and explore a new skill that you can uh, you know obviously give yourself some guidance in and so on it's fantastic you will certainly learn something uh, when you build uh, custom build your own flight simulator I may have mentioned this before and I don't necessarily know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing I think it can be both uh, and that is there's always something to do on it um, I still to this very day even though as you can see I've got pretty much everything now that I would possibly want there's always something that I can do and improve and so on well recently as you know I've upgraded my standby gauges here uh, but over time you know I'd want to get um, you know force feedback happening into the yokes or you know uh, getting a motorized trim wheel or you know all sorts of different things virtual reality I want to put you know have a look at at a bit later on as well so there's always something to tinker with um, and that's the fun part about it uh, I'll cover also where tinkering can also be a problem in the bad side of it as well and we'll have a look at that because we're gonna go to the bad stuff right about now depending on what you want to do depending on what your vision is for your aircraft be it a light aircraft like this or a fully fledged 737 a330 a380 the, the you know you can the list goes on as to what you want to achieve or what you want to do um, it can be expensive and it can be very expensive so you know the sky is the limit as to what you want to do and I'll give you an example when I first set out with this uh, simulation build, initially um, I was actually looking for an actual C172 shell, and I was looking online for a for a broken C172 plane at a wrecker that I could actually get the exact shell cowling and the shell of it and cut it off and use and gut it out and so on, right? that's where my dream started obviously I can that idea quite early on but you get the idea it, it's it can be expensive so I guess what I'm saying is um, you know the planning as to what your visions going to be um, is really important up front because it can run away from you if you're not careful in this sim as well you know again if you think about not only the instrumentation the the physical shell um, all of the bits and pieces that I've got TVs computer operator station everything you know I've spent well in excess of Australian 30,000 Australian dollars um, on this hobby now albeit that's been spread over a number of years but you know it can and well does get expensive so really think that through again because you know as I say it's it's a bit of a downside to it the hobby can be expensive with any build you're going to make mistakes there's going to be things that you think you would have wished you could have done better um, and I've made a number of mistakes more so in getting things wrong in my model and in design and so on and I've had to do it again and again uh, a couple of examples the panel uh, here when I initially did this panel I probably had three goes at it and this is where it's going to a CNC machinist uh, and they're doing it on their industrial CNC's they give me back the, they give me back the template I check a few things and put it in and it doesn't work got to do it again um, I started with three millimeter MDF that uh, was um, too flimsy went to six millimeter MDF um, that was okay but I had a couple of points that were out um, so I had to go and do it again and uh, you know and each time it's a hundred dollars here one hundred and fifty dollars here and it's sort of you know these things start to add up so um, you know there are going to be mistakes uh, in what you do um, you know and so I guess just be mindful of that and probably because of that I would say if I was talking back to my 
previous self looking at this do not rush the design do not rush the planning and do not rush the design if you get that right if you plan it out right and just think that through properly over months um, and that's probably what I did here um, it will turn out better than what you would have expected so do not rush that have a have a vision in mind as to where you want to go with it um, but even with that as I said you're probably going to make some mistakes hopefully they won't be too expensive but don't beat yourself up about it um, carry on reach out to the community uh, plenty of people there to help you in no matter what aspect uh, you are building I mentioned it before in terms of the good thing is the tinkering side of it but it also can be a bad thing and the reason I say that is Murphy's Law sometimes kicks in and when you want to just go for a flight you know you just want to load up your simulator go for a flight and something doesn't work and it could be the MFDs not working or one of your standby gauges isn't fine or the flaps indicators not uh, sorry the flaps panels not working or I lose mixture or you name it anything or I lose a monitor or any, <laughs> something happens the computer decides to pack up you know there's generally that's a frustration and then you find yourself tinkering just to get the simulator working with everything balanced and all now tuned in before you can fly so again um, you know advantages of being at a computer station just with the monitor the less peripherals that you've got the less chance is going to be that something's not quite going to work for you on the day um, obviously the more peripherals the more prone it is that something may just not communicate with the computer or whatever and off you go so again tinkering's great when you want to be tinkering tinkering's not so great when you just want to be flying I think in terms of points that are ugly or downright ugly it's a pretty bold word actually I wouldn't say that there's stuff that's really ugly more so bad but if I was to pick any one thing really that I would say is ugly um, about it it's probably that once you've selected your aircraft type that you want that's pretty much it unless you've got a way where you've got some sort of modular panel that you're able to very quickly get out and get back in um, the panel that you run with and the configuration that you run with is pretty much now restricts the type of aircraft that you're going to fly in a simulator sense inside of your shell so that's why I, get, I come back to that point at the front end in terms of the amount of planning that you want to do have a think about really where do you want to take this um, you know because some people want to go straight for the airliners and that's great because there's a lot more involved in the airliners as you probably would appreciate in terms of all of the configuration of panels and switches and knobs and everything else as opposed to a small light aircraft like this um, but it does restrict you you know so I can't be in here with this and think for a second that I'm going to be firing up a 737 that just won't work um, so you know I appreciated that and I guess for that what I'm saying is it is a bit of an ugly side of it is you are restrictive that could also be a bonus because again for the Cessna it's fantastic but it does restrict you well there you have it hopefully that was of some benefit for you it's a fantastic hobby building a simulator and I can only wish you the best in all of what you decide to do if you like this video please hit that like button feel free to subscribe tell all your friends all that YouTube stuff which I'm still getting my head around after so many years but at the end of the day look forward to catching you on the next one bye for now well hopefully that's helped a little bit I've probably not covered any but more importantly have some fun out there and I would love to connect with you and see what simulator in uh, yeah.